Hello and welcome to my review of the Mac 2 Redberg rig. In this video we'll cover the box, instructions, we'll build it and then we'll talk about the model itself. So if you like finding out about these older sets then I think you're going to like what I've got for you. So sit back, relax and enjoy the video. This set was released in 1994 under the model team range and consists of 1172 pieces. It came with instructions for two models, the second model being a Jeep Toner Dragster. Back in 1994 this set would have retailed for $110. Looking at Bricklink you can pick up a second hand model with no box for about £100, with box £130 and brand new sealed in box about £330 upwards. If you want you can also part out this set, it would come to about £212 plus posters and packaging, I would suggest it would be about £60 on top. In my opinion I think it would be better off buying a brand new set for just over £300. Sometimes you can find a really good bargain, I got my set off eBay for about £51 plus £10 poster and packaging. Click on the link above to check out the video that I did. Looking at the model's box is a good size, it measures 52 by 38 by 7 centimeters. It's a sturdy box with a simple design. On the front face you can see the main model. On the edges of the box you've got the building age 10 to 16 and some further images. Turn the box to its back you can now see the second model, the Jeep Tone the Dragster and some nice images of the main model. Flipping the lid open exposes a viewing window so you can see the Lego pieces inside and also some further images again of both models. This box comes in two parts. The top part actually lifts off completely and that now exposes the inside so you can get out the Lego pieces that would be sitting in this blue molded tray. Lift out the tray and you find the instruction manual. The instruction manual is A4 in size. It's a high gloss finish with images of the main model and a second model on the front and back covers. It's edge glue bound and has 75 pages. Both the A and B models can be broken down into three separate mini builds. For the main model, you've got the rig, trailer and jet. And for the model B, you've got the Jeep, trailer and dragster. To complete the main model, it takes 84 steps in total. So by my calculations, if you have 1,172 pieces, that gives you approximately 14 pieces per step. Whilst there are many pieces per step, the instructions are clear with good diagrams. The rig has 35 steps. The trailer, 21 steps, and the jet, 28 steps. The builds of the two different models are separated by an image of the main model completed. And that then leads us on to model B, the Jeep, trailer, and dragster. The model B takes 69 steps, but it does look a more simpler build. The Jeep takes 28 steps, the trailer, 20 steps, and the dragster, 21 steps. So that's the box and instructions covered. So now let's build it.
Here we have the finished model and I must say it is a nice looking model. It's large, it's 52 centimeters long, 26 centimeters wide and 14 centimeters tall. I'm going to talk about the complete model first and then go on to the individual builds. First thing that always strikes me about the model team range is how with standard system bricks they always manage to capture so much detail in these models. And whilst this is a large model in total, each of the individual three builds are actually small models. The common and therefore unifying components that all three models have is the color scheme. A 50-50 split between a red base and a white top with a thin black line separating them in the middle. The set has stickers and this like the color scheme unifies the three models. The stickers also gives me clues about what this model is meant to be. The Redbird team logo tells me that this is a display team. I can picture this jet going to different air shows wowing the crowds with its speed and agility. Now let's have a quick look at each of the individual models, starting off with the rig. The rig is 25cm by 10cm by 14cm high, however if you include the radio antennae this increases the height to 17cm. Whilst the model is small it does capture some great details, I do especially like how the roof overhangs the front of the windscreen and also the radiator grill. The round 1x1 one one translucent pieces add a bit of sparkle to the model, those are great little details. I am however confused about the twin exhaust pipes with the black and gold 1x2 piece. Is that meant to depict smoke coming out of the rig or is that a special shoe at the top of the exhaust pipes? I'm not too sure about that one. The building techniques are all very straightforward, it just have one or two Technic components inside to enable the wheels to steer and the chassis plate as well. But apart from that the rest is all system bricks. Thinking about features and playability. The rig is steered by a knob on top of the roof that turns the front wheels. I did find turning the knob a little bit tricky with all the Lego pieces surrounding it and also with the two tall antenna either side. It makes it a little bit tricky but it doesn't really detract too much from the playability. Both doors open to get access to the cabin and also the bonnet is front hinged and that's a nice little feature so you can pop open the bonnet and have a look at the V8 engine. Turning my attention to the trailer, my first impressions are, wow, what a great looking trailer. It definitely has a showbiz feel to it. The trailer is 35 centimeters long by 10 centimeters wide and 10 centimeters high. Really nice proportions. Again, it has good use of colors with the red and white side panels. I do like the combination of black and gray inside the trailer. That's a nice little touch. And also again, the yellow one by one round translucent pieces on the side. The trailer isn't just a single flatbed. It has a step design to it. The front is elevated with the winches. And at the rear, you have the split wing piece, which is reminiscent of the jet tail fin. The design also incorporates three little ramps that enables the plane to be pushed up onto the trailer. Another nice little feature is how the center ramp actually fits within the chassis itself. The trailer has a wheeled landing gear that can be folded away. So when it's connected to the rig, it's folded up. And when it's not connected, it's folded down to self-support the trailer. I did try a few times winching the jet up onto the trailer and I must admit it was a bit hit and miss. The wheel sometimes did come off the ramp when it was going up or sometimes the front wheel of the jet would get trapped within the two lattice guides of the trailer. However, it did work a few times and it is a nice little feature. Finally, let's look at the jet. The jet measures 26 centimeters from wingtip to wingtip. The length is 25 centimeters and the height 10 centimeters. So like the other models, it is very well proportioned. The color scheme works really well again with the red turbines and the red tail fins setting off the white wings and the white cockpit. The yellow pilot seat is the same as in the rig, which is nice. And I also like the two by two angled printed piece showing the graphics. That's a nice touch in the cockpit. The way that the windscreen is created is another nice touch. I'm guessing that these blue pieces will have come from some of these space sets back in the 90s. The making of the model is straightforward with some interesting building techniques. For example, the turbines attach to the model in two places, to the underside of the wing, but also to the undercarriage by means of a Technic pin, a simple but well-designed solution. Whilst the features and functions of the jet are limited, the front wheel is on a turntable that allows it to swivel and there is a hatch in the middle of the plane that opens off. For me, the most important feature of this airplane is how it actually feels in your hand because as a child, you're going to be picking it up and you're going to be pretending to be flying this jet. The model is very well weighted. It has an even weight distribution across it. 
So on the ground, this allows the model to either sit on all three wheels, or if you like, you could tilt the model as if it's about to take off on its rear wheels only. And I think that's a nice little feature. And then clearly in the air, you can hold it in the middle of the plane and it feels just right. So what's my final thoughts on this set? The model itself is packaged in a good sturdy box. I do like the molded insert to it and the viewing window. I do feel sometimes that Lego today with some of the boxes that they produce could actually learn a few lessons from how some of the older sets were originally packaged. The instructions themselves, as you expect of a set from this era, there are many pieces per step, but that's okay. The instructions are well drawn, got great color to them, and you can easily work out where the pieces go. When it comes to the building, it's fun and not at all repetitive. And you must also remember you've got 1,172 pieces in this set with a second Model B that can be made. So good value for money. You've got the usual thing with the stickers. The stickers do look great, but unfortunately they do cover three or four pieces in one go. So if you do build this set and you want to then dismantle it, either you've got to um, be very careful how you take off the stickers or you've just got to keep it whole. Regarding the features and functions, this set just has some nice touches individually on each of the models, but also collectively, if you think about the way that the trailer can actually join the rig, there's a little pin connector there, and then how the jet can be winched onto the trailer. So in my opinion, the Lego designers at the time put a great deal of thought and effort into how they can ensure that all three individual models come together as one unit. So both as a display set and a play set, this model works really well. If you like your older LEGO sets and especially the LEGO Model Team range, then I would recommend that you purchase this set. It is good value, especially if you can pick up a second hand set in good condition for about £100. I do hope that you've enjoyed this video and if you have, then please consider liking the video. These videos take a extraordinary length of time to produce, especially the stop motion. So your appreciation by liking and subscribing to my channel would be very much welcomed. Also, any constructive feedback you have will be warmly received. So without further ado, thank you again for watching and until next time, take care.